I'm going to quickly demonstrate how to use Nick Silver Effects Pro with Lightroom 2. What is Nick Silver Effects Pro? It's a Photoshop plugin for doing black and white conversion and then adding sophisticated effects like film grain, toning, vignettes, and burned edges. The most recent version of Silver Effects Pro includes support for Lightroom 2. It can be called as an external editor. Since Lightroom 2 includes sophisticated tools for black and white conversion, why would you want to use a tool like Nick Silver Effects Pro? One reason is convenience. Silver Effects Pro makes it very easy to do sophisticated black and white conversions. Another reason is because there are features in Silver Effects Pro that simply cannot be done with Lightroom 2 alone. For example, Lightroom 2 does not have the ability to add a realistic film grain effect. With Silver Effects Pro, you can do black and white conversion. You can then take your black and white print and tone it. You can add vignette effects. You can add sophisticated film grain effects to simulate specific black and white films. And you can even add burned edged effects. And you can do all of that quickly and easily. When you work with a plugin filter in Photoshop, everything is seamless. Photoshop passes image details to the plugin filter. Changes are made, they're passed back to Photoshop. With Lightroom 2, a copy of the photograph is saved in your catalog. And then that copy is passed to the external editor. In this case, we're talking about Silver Effects Pro. You make whatever changes you want to make there, and those changes are sent back to Lightroom. To invoke Silver Effects Pro, we go up to the Photo Menu item, select Edit In, and then select Silver Effects Pro. Because Lightroom 2 was already installed on this computer, when I installed Silver FX Pro, it automatically installed itself within Lightroom 2 also. So I have access to Silver FX Pro in both Lightroom 2 and within Photoshop. Click here. Because I'm working with a RAW file, I only really have one option. You can see that the name of the RAW file is Scotland underscore 0005.crw. It's a Canon RAW file. I'll click Edit here to edit a copy. And here we have the user interface for Silver Effects Pro. And here you can see that we're working with a copy of the photograph. It is now named Scotland 0005 underscore edit dot tiff. One of the obvious features in the Silver Effects Pro user interface are these thumbnails over here for different styles. We work with them in a way that should be familiar to you from Lightroom 2. You can click on any of them, see the immediate effect applied to the photograph. You can save them to the Favorites tab simply by clicking on the star here. If you make changes to a photograph and you want to save those as a style so that they appear over here, easily done. I'm not going to demonstrate all of the features in Nick Silver Effects Pro and all of the settings. That would require a much longer video. Purpose here is just to show you how to use this tool with Lightroom 2. So I'm just going to cover the major features. I do have a forthcoming review of Nick Silver Effects Pro that walks through all the settings, explains them in great detail. These three settings up here, brightness, contrast, and structure, affect the entire photograph. These are global settings. Brightness and contrast should be familiar to you. Structure is Silvery Effects Pro speak. It's analogous to sharpening. It gives greater definition to image features. These six little colored spots here represent different kinds of color filters that could be used with black and white film. No filter effect. This simulates a red filter, orange filter, yellow filter, green filter and blue filter. Nick Silver Effects Pro also simulates 18 different film effects. The default setting is neutral. Click on that. For example, if you wanted to have a high contrast, high grain effect, you might select a film like Ilford HP5 Plus 400. If you wanted very fine grain, a black and white photographer would probably select something like Kodak Panatomic X. Good general purpose black and white film might be something like Kodak 100 T Max Pro. You can click on a setting, and then if you like, you can even make adjustments to those settings. You can adjust the grain, you can adjust the sensitivity for different colors, changing how those are interpreted as tones, and you can even adjust the tone curve. These settings here for shadows and highlights protect shadow and highlight details. If you expand that, there's a histogram underneath there. Stylizing applies vignette effects, burned edge effects. It also applies toning effects. There are a number of presets there that you can choose from. Copper tones, coffee tones, etc. The feature that I find really exciting is the ability to add control points. Nick refers to this as U point technology. You add a control point. For example, let's assume that we might want to darken the wood here so that we have more contrast between the wood, the stones in front, and the grass behind. We can add a control point. 
simply by clicking here now, the area that's affected by the control point shows up as a circle, and we can change that. Want to limit that so that it affects predominantly the wood. We can control the brightness, the contrast, and the structure for the localized area, just as we did up here for the global area. So if we wanted to darken the wood in order to add some more contrast, we can simply pull this down to something like minus 42, can adjust the contrast, increase it if we like, and we could even add a little more structure. So now we can see that we have a lot of wood grain effect here. If we go here to control points, this is our control point. We can now duplicate this to make it easy to add to the wood on the other side. Now all we have to do is drag this over here. And then we can easily edit either one of these. When we're satisfied with our black and white conversion, simply click on Save, and we return to Lightroom 2. Now that we're back in Lightroom 2, there's our original RAW file. Here's our edited file in our catalog. And now we're free to make any other edits that we might like to this photograph. I hope you find this brief introduction to using Nick Silver Effects Pro with Lightroom 2 helpful with your digital photography. I'm Glenn Mitchell from thelightsright.com. Cheers.